you know, oftentimes my clients will say to me, you know, what's our defense? And I will tell them honestly, I don't know. I haven't tried the case yet. Uh, because the case that you plan to try is nothing like the case that you actually try. They turn out to be two entirely different things, different set of facts, witnesses going north, witnesses going south, uh, surprises. So you have to remain nimble and on your feet. And as one of my friends, a close friend of mine who is a diehard baseball fan and a diehard Yankee fan and, and, and a lawyer in Hackensack and, and a man that I adore, he, he pointed out something when we were at a game a while back and he said, you know, Joe, he says, I've never seen a baseball game where something doesn't happen that I've never seen before. And how many times you had a baseball game, you turn to the person you're with and say, I have never, I've been watching baseball now for 50 years. I've never seen that happen before. How many people here know the, um, the play which I believe has been banned by baseball now? I believe this has been banned in the last two years. You know where the, the other team will have runners on first and third, and your pitcher will fake to third and turn and throw to first. It's a high school play. It works great in high school, you know, because the kid, the base runner on first is like a sophomore or a junior. He's all excited. <laughs> and he sees the pitcher turn, you know, to, you know, the guy on third, and he sees him, all right, there you go. and all of a sudden, oh, Jesus, I'm out, you know? Well, I was actually, I saw a Met game on TV just a few years ago where the Mets were in that position. The Mets were, the other team had runners on first and third, which is unusual in a Met game because usually they have, the other team has bases loaded. <laughs> Um, and, and, I, and I recall that the Met pitcher faked to third and wheeled and threw to first and actually got the guy out of first. Now that, they, that never works. And I was stunned to see that play work. It, that alone was unique. The batter that was up at the plate then walks. You know, the pitcher throws a few more balls and the guy walks. Now it's first and third and one out. The pitcher fakes to third, wheels and throws to first, and picks the guy off first. Now, if you're the first guy walking back to the dugout, <laughs> you know, all the guys in the dugout are like, oh, you idiot, that's high school, you got, you got buff. What if you're the second guy walking back to the, I, I, I didn't expect that to happen. Really? <laughs> it just happened a moment ago. But if, when you're trying a case, you know, you have to be prepared because anything can happen and you never expect it to happen. Now, and we thought about the fact that uh, while Bob believes, Bob's analogy was that pitching is like cross-examination, you know, because you're going to be taking an approach, you know, with a, a pitch high, a pitch inside, and the witness is going to be coming back, and you have to anticipate where he's going to hit the ball. I, I told Bob that for me as a trial attorney, pitching is much more akin to summation. Because how does a pitcher succeed? Is it merely by throwing 93 miles an hour? No, because if you only throw 93 miles an hour, uh, the hitter is ultimately going to time it, and he's going to drive the ball somewhere. It's all about, you know, Tom Seaver will tell you there's three, six, three things that you have to do be, to be a successful pitcher. You have to change location, you have to change speed, and you have to change movement, okay? Whether you throw a fastball or a curve, that's movement. I believe that, you know, pitching is much like a summation. You know, it, you talk about speed, location, and, and movement. You have to, sometimes you raise your voice, and sometimes you lower it. I find one of the most effective things that I can do during summation quite frequently is to whisper. And I have all the jurors leaning forward. They feel like they've been let in on a secret, and that you're telling them something you don't want anyone else to know. Everyone wants to be in on that secret. And sometimes I'll speak more quickly and then pause and then to make my point. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard that witness. He talked about the fingerprints and what did he not tell you? Anything about who they matched. So you modulate your speed, you modulate your tone. Um, to me, that's what pitching is like. And that's why baseball is much like a trial in so many ways. You know, as, as the professors already pointed out, you know, you have men in, in black robes, black uniforms, you know, deciding the game.